Griffin Poetry Prize, 2005. Judge's Citation. Matthew Rohrer. With jumpy verve, Rohrer's green-lit poems lay bare an anxiety of influence, social and linguistic, and present us the sideways view of a world of a young American not able to assume the mantle of hero, not able to be the adorable boy. In the midst of what could be, in other hands, wreckage or hopelessness, Rohrer's poems run up the banner of hopefulness, create complete poems out of incomplete thoughts. Rohrer has an enchanting willingness to look outward, a willingness not to grasp the world using old means which have failed us, even if no new means present themselves ready-made. No wonder jumpiness is in our very condition. There is, too, a current of sadness that his lines and words buck even as they convey, yet the grief they carry does not bear us downward. This is a book with an edge, a book of brash clamor and hard-earned joy. Dog Boy, Matthew Rohrer I had originally planned this book was going to be a book of um, poems about cryptozoological phenomena, which is a surprisingly rich field. Um, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Um, only two of the poems survived in the book, though. This is, I'll read uh, Dog Boy. It's in two parts. It's a prose poem. Late at night in Oklahoma, a very small an extremely small man ran across the road in front of my friend's car. He does not doubt this is real, though the rest of us do, and it doesn't bother him. He continues to paint portraits of astonishing trees each day and take long drives through the country at night. Nothing else can be learned about this mysterious incident. On Scott Road in Pittsburgh, which is a steep and winding city full of good-natured people, just at the point where the road bottoms out beside a gnarled and ancient cemetery, a very small and extremely small man ran across the road in front of my brother-in-law's car and scrambled into the tombstones. For the purposes of this story, I will refer to my brother-in-law as Matthew. Matthew had a friend in the car with him, and both of them saw this creature pass in front of them through the headlights. Matthew is the type to downplay this kind of thing, whether he dwells on it inwardly or not. Later, another friend of his who lives on Scott Road told Matthew he heard something outside one night, and when he peered through the French doors, he saw the same extremely small man leaping over the sandbox. How did he know it was the same one? I asked Matthew. And he shrugged and continued to strum an imaginary guitar, and Matthew's unconcern is the biggest mystery of them all. A Green Light by Matthew Rohrer.